Hey guys, welcome to Minnesota Slicks Gameplay Channel. As you all know, I'm Call of Duty's official ghost hunter. And so we decided to go ahead and hop down to this old abandoned haunted house in a fucking cave. No idea where we are. But, the good news is, is I found a fucking boat. I'm gonna go ahead and take it for a spin. So while I do that, enjoy the gameplay. What's going on, everybody? Uh, Friendly neighborhood slickster, bringing you a uh, an unusual event, a uh, 2v2 GB match with uh, Mr. Kana SVG, aka Gunna Kelly. Um, this map or this particular match is actually uh, non-variant, so. Um, you'll see some different maps. It just so happened Arcaden was our first draw. Um, but, uh, yeah, you'll have to bear with it. Um, as I've mentioned before, this is one of the first times that I've uh, ran a GB. I did some right away when it came out with Goldie and some of his subscribers. I think I ran like two or three matches. But um, this is my first 2v2. Um, so you'll have to forgive uh, my shot. Um, and you'll have to forgive uh, some of my decision making. Um, that's the hardest part about getting back into uh, competitive, in my opinion, is knowing the spots and anticipating. Um, those are the things that, no matter how many pubs you play, you'll never pick up unless you're in a competitive setting. You know, um, angles, vantage points. Uh, when you plant spots, people can go. Um, I mean, all those things just take, I mean, it literally takes game. Like, you have to, like, play multiple matches, multiple, multiple, multiple matches um, before those things start to click. So um, the good news was for us, at least for me, because um, Kana's no slacker, you know what I mean? He's, he's, he's real good. Um, but luckily for me, we didn't draw terribly difficult teams. So the first team that we drew was the Radar and even if we had played a bad team on Raider, I'm sure we would have gotten smashed. So, um, and I say we because uh, of myself. Uh, you know, I hadn't played any GBs, let alone Radar. You know, so. Um, but yeah. You know, that's the that's the cool thing too about competitive, at least, is that there's more on the line. I guess kind of it's not even that there is, right? Like you're not. I'm not going to take home a medal, you know, because we want a match, but. Um, the intensity's higher, the players aren't shitty, um, and, and oftentimes what I, what I like most about competitive is the fact that you don't die to bullshit most of the time, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, you might get leg comped or whatever, but even realistically in that essence, like, you don't see that as much either. It's just good to not die to, to shitty stuff like, uh, C4 or, uh, I don't know, just all kinds of shit like that, you know? But I just think the beautiful thing about it is when you get somebody that you know, that you play with, that you know can play the game. Um, you know, the first this is actually the first time me and Khan have ever, ever run a competitive, right? So um, to be fair, I guess I don't know 100% what his next move is going to be. Um, like when me and Goldie played way back in the day on MW2, he rushed a lot. And I was a much slower defensive type player. Um, I threw that stun just so you, you know what I mean? For instance, just in this example here, I threw that stun just to break the glass so, he, you know, it wasn't a knife kind of thing. And it ended up working out. I dropped down. And at this point, I was kind of asking Connor where he planned it and if I could see it when I pop out because he's going to go for the defuse. And he said, yeah, you'll see it. So, But uh, I could anticipate Goldie's moves to a certain degree, um, meaning... I could just kind of know where he was going to be at at a certain given time. Um, and that's that's kind of what people, I think, talk about when they talk about chemistry. Um, and so when you can vibe off somebody like that, um, it, it, it helps. Cause if Gold, you know, and it helped Goldie, too, because he knew that if he rushed and died right away, the odds of me being dead by that point were pretty slim because I played defensively. Um, and so he could rush and know that even though he had gone down, there was still the chance that I could, you know, 1v1 or, or 2v2v1 clutch it. So, um, you know, 
I don't know, those are the little intricacies with competitive that I think really separate it from from playing pubs. I mean, pubs are fun, don't get me wrong. It's always fun to 1v6 clutch and um, to drop a 21 bomb or a 24 bomb. I mean, it's it's fun. I mean, there's no doubt about it that it's fun, but is it fulfilling? No. You know, because next map, who knows what's going to happen. Um, I'd much rather drop a four and one, or a five and two, or a five and three, or even a even a five and four, and win um, a two v two than drop a twenty one and zero against a bunch of bunch of pubs pub kids. And then, <laughs> funny story on that one, I was like, oh, check out this all star Nick. I figured this dude was downstairs, just right at bottom esky, and I tried to fucking bank that nade off the pillar, and it was just a stupid play in general. Um, I wish it had worked because I'll bet you I might have gotten a hit marker at least because I think that's where I ended up being. Um, that's one thing still is that um, although I might not be uh, competitive savvy per se, um, I still have, because I've played so much S&D over the course of my time playing Call of Duty, there's just this instinct about it that you just kind of know where people might be. Um, you know, One thing to note too is when I was playing MW2 with Goldie, one thing that I actually was decent at was nade spots. And not that, like, I would sit there and practice them, but, like, kind of in the heat of battle, dude, I'd just let a nade fly, you know, just out of anticipation. And uh, sometimes they were just dirty, you know. And, uh, you know, that was one thing I focused on right away when I started playing competitive. First thing was my shot. Um, I used to play on a really high sensitivity. And uh, when we started running GBs, um, and I started running three bursts and stuff like that, um, I needed to move that down because, as you all well know, um, you need to be on point when you're playing, especially playing good teams, because having a sloppy shot, dude, is going to cost you the game all the time, you know, and uh, you just can't let that happen, and so I moved my sensitivity down, and then I really started focusing on getting better with my stuns and nades. Um, I still waste them, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not perfect at it, but um, when it comes to competitive, uh, that's one thing to focus on, in my opinion at least, is, and here we go on the second map, Interchange, and this is kind of where you can tell we don't, we're not playing Variant right now, but uh, when you focus on that, because those are really key tools, and those who are seasoned call or competitive players understand this 100%, so forgive me if I'm just uh, stating the obvious, but um, if you don't play competitive, um, one thing to focus on is to... Uh, really get good with those stuns and nades. Um, this game's really tough. Um, like in MW2, if you stun somebody with the concussion and you let a nade fly, 99% of the time you're going to get a kill with it. Um, whereas in this game, there's just no guarantees. Like right there, I shouldn't have stunned and naded. Um, I didn't get a hit marker with my stun, so um, I shouldn't have naded that, but I wasted it. So that's kind of showing you, you know, my uh, noobishness when it comes to competitive right now. But um, yeah, those are just key points, you know, those are just key things to take into consideration. And here, just to, uh, so you understand, I saw that there was gunfire potentially coming from um, what I think is B-bomb here, I think, right, to my right. And so what I wanted to do was cut off any push to Kana's flank. And so what I did is I covered this alleyway here along with the mid-alley. And uh, that's kind of my logic with this, is that if it, even if I can't kill the guy, um, at least I can make the call out. Um, and I put shots into him. I thought he should have died. I called him out, kind of cleaned it up. So that's kind of, you know, little things in, in GB. I mean, I don't know why he pushed so hard. I think we may have had bomb down near A. I can't be sure, but, um, and that's why I kind of cut had that cut off. But it's those little things in, in, in competitive that really make it fun, you know, because if I was in that kid's situation, I mean, what a tough spot, you know, but if you clutch it, what a great feeling that would be, you know. And uh, that's what I like about it, it's just that added level of uh, logic that goes into the game. Um, and it's nice to play people who know what they're doing, you know. Um, it makes it feel kind of like, oh, well, you know what, I play pubs and blah, 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 and I stomp pubs and shit like that. But um, it does, it helps your confidence level out because you're, you're playing people that play the game, you know. I mean, you're not going to go play competitive if you're just the, you know, the fucking weekend warrior on Call of Duty, you know. I mean, you might, but you'll get smashed and you'll never come back, you know. So at least the teams that you're playing, you know, have an understanding of the game, and it just it makes it better. It just makes it better.
And here, I, Cuddle was putting shots. I stumbled directions, and then I cleaned it up. Almost got caught with my pants down with that nade out. That would have sucked, but... Um, you know, that's just, to me, that's what really makes it better. Um, don't get me wrong, man. I mean, I really enjoy going into pubs, and, you know, 99% of the time, doesn't matter how much time you have on the game, um, you know, I'm not saying I'm the best or anything like that. Please don't get that impression, but I know that I can give anybody a run for their money um, if I play smart. So, um, But this is different, and, and it, it was really enjoyable. So there's also going to be, I got another one. It was a, uh, it was a GB variant. Um, that'll be the next gameplay that's posted. So, and these scores aren't ridiculous. I just want to put it up. You know what I mean? I didn't go ham. I, I was not carrying by any means. Um, it, nothing special happened. Um, but it's nice to be able to put up a couple of wins and, um, you know, just show you guys, show you guys my, my back to uh, my back to competitive stuff. I mean, it's it's just it's really cool to have have been able to do that. And you know, I'm sorry, Connor, I can't get on as you know more often. Um, I, I, I got shit going on. I had an interview yesterday, um, and uh, I had ball Monday, and uh, I pulled my hamstring. And uh, cool story about that, though, is I pulled my hammy, like, first game, and then we get into second game, and I was kind of sitting out because I just – it's rec league co-ed, uh, the league I play Monday, and so there's no reason to put your body on the line. You know, I play a much more serious Thursday night men's league where, you know, if I pulled something or whatever, I'd want to play through it and, and that kind of deal. But um, I don't know if you guys know who Kurt Gibson is, but he played for the Royals and um, in a big, big game for them. I want to say it was a playoff game or World Series game. I can't remember what it was. But um, he hit a walk-off. I think it was a two-run shot or a three-run shot with, uh, with a broken ankle. And uh, we had two players on, on base, and they get up to bat. And this team was playing as hard as they possibly could. Yeah. And uh, they thought they were great because, you know, a couple of their guys had put a ball over the fence, you know. And uh, so I stepped up, and uh, um, I'll hold on, hold that thought. On this particular play, that's always, it's always good. If you can pick just a neutral position between bomb sites, see when he got that bomb planted, I was able to come out, and I would have been able to, to by my vantage point, reduce the amount of places he would have been able to go. So if I hadn't seen him, I would assume that he had gone long tunnel. And I could have fake, fake defused, pushed up towards tunnel, and gotten the kill. But anyway, so I'm up to bat. There's two players on. I got a hurt leg. And uh, dude lays me a fucking meatball. And I just fucking stroke that bitch, dude. Like left center. Probably, I'd probably want to put it at maybe like a 325 foot shot. Nothing big. I mean, I'm not a big guy. So I'm not going to be putting anything over 400 feet. But just fucking laced it. And, uh. You know, I just how great does that feel, dude? Just to put a rocket over the over the fence, dude, on this team that's trying so hard, and you're injured, and you don't give a fuck, and just blast one on them. We didn't win; we lost by one. It was I think his final score was like 10-9, but um, yeah, it felt good. And this was a stupid play. I thought I stunned him more than this, but I didn't, and he cleaned me up. So yeah, that's what you get for for making a stupid play. We should have been watching flank. I mean, they had to change it up eventually. Um, they're not stupid, right? Like you know, these aren't just you know, pub stars, man. I mean, they're going to switch it up on you. And that's just, again, my lack of experience coming into play when it comes to uh, MW3 competitive. But, um, so yeah, I, you know, I, I wish I'd get on more, but uh, I, I've just got commitments and, and things like that. And it's tough, you know. I wish I could do this more, but, uh, you know, life's calling, man. I got I to gotta be present for certain things. And I've got other interests now at this stage of my life where, um, you know, you gotta you gotta learn to sacrifice time for certain things to to be able to p participate in others. And um, you know, I'm still happy. I mean, I, I'm happy that I haven't let COD go completely. I'm happy that when I went into competitive, it wasn't just a stomp. You know, um, those are all good feelings and, and good things to have. So, um, with the longer videos like this, where I'm running two maps and things, I'm not gonna put a clip at the end. Um, it's just kind of worthless. And here we are. I'm just calling this guy out, telling Connie, yeah, he's heading towards boss and come around the corner, kind of surprised to see him there, and uh, that's it, man, uh, it was 2-1, they took us on outpost, um, I fucking hate snow maps, they're fucking, they just make me want to cut my wrists, and, you know, take a shit in my hand and eat it, so, uh, but that's a wrap, dude, that's the end of the com, appreciate you guys checking it out, and, uh, look forward to more in the future, your boy Slicks, Vamanos.